And finally, there's three. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another Road to the Scale Nationals video. Now we've got all three trucks in front of us here. We've made progress on all three this week and some progress outside of the actual trucks themselves. Last week I discussed that I brought my welder home, my TIG welder, and this week I was able, with the help of my buddy Tony, to get my fabrication table home as well. So I've got a big steel four foot by four foot welding table that I made and I was able to get that here. Now I can start getting everything set up and start actually getting some metal work done. And we're going to cover some of that in this video, but we'll take an overview first of what we've got done this week on these three trucks. The class three being the one that manifested into something physical at this point, at least, but the other ones have also had some progress made. We'll start and we'll count up. We'll start with the class one. Class one work, I've done just a little bit of additional styrene work, specifically on the rear bed area, trying to reinforce the area where I bobbed the back of it. Now I've also made some decisions on tube work on this. I was having a really hard time planning out how I wanted to do the tube work, trying to tie in the inner cage to the actual shock mounts and how that was going to work with going through the body and attaching to the chassis. And I've made some decisions on how to handle that. And what we're going to do is basically separate the things. The shock towers are going to be separate from the inner cage. Make it simple. The inner cage will likely uh, connect to the body rather than to the chassis just for simplicity and still being able to actually work with this vehicle Not a big deal and it's class one. It's hard body. I'm not gonna drive it like I would drive either of these So I just needed to get past that in my head made those decisions We can move forward. This truck is the one that likely we're going to move into some actual metal fabrication today So when we do that, we'll kind of switch to vlog style and go into there start doing a little bit of work Hopefully I've found that I've got the right tools brought home to accomplish some metal work. At this point, I haven't done any fabrication here yet. So just gonna, you know, we're gonna start, get going, see what we find, see what I need to get additionally or what tools I need to double up on. We'll get there. I think what we're gonna actually do today is work on the front bumper. I wanna keep the front bumper super tight to the front of the grill and then tie it back to give it a little bit of a slope. If everything goes well, hopefully we can move on to the rear bumper, but we'll just see how everything moves forward at this point. I did realize that I was actually off on my dates. I need to have this truck done two weeks prior to nationals for Crawl Masters 2020. So this truck, it needs, to get, it needs to get done. Now there is no scale points or anything like that for Crawl Masters, it just has to be a tiny tire hard body truck. But uh, regardless, I need to have it up running, finished, you know, as close as possible. I could probably add some details, you know, after the fact, but let's, let's be realistic. We're gonna be, you know, down to the wire as it is. So definitely need to make some progress. So going to class two now, this one we talked a little bit last week about the inner fender well and the stamping process that I hoped to accomplish. And I've actually done that. It went really well. I got that, I got the first stamp done. And it's this big thing here. Actually, both pieces of the stamp are uh, still attached here, but I have the actual inner fender in the chassis currently. Now the inner fender setup is not permanently affixed in here yet, but it's actually just in place and everything worked out well. I have the other half of the molds printed so that I can actually stamp those. And I'm going to actually go through that process in a second video covering specifically the design work and the process that I go through to create these stamped inner fenders or sheet metal panels in general, wherever you think that it may be useful to you. Now I designed these specifically for that MST JP1 body. So it's not necessarily a universal style inner fender panel that would be possibly useful to, you know, people with multiple bodies on a VS410. But if you do want, you know, this file or these files, I'll host them. You can print them yourself. You can try it out. You can do whatever you want. Not a big deal. It's not something I plan to reuse. So you're more than welcome to the files. I will host those on Thingiverse. You can download them. Even if you just want to look at the design and see if it's something that you know that you can more easily grasp the design of with looking at a physical part or a digitally physical part something in 3d you can zoom around rather than seeing my you know video here that was the progress that we really made this week as far as that goes the only other thing that i've done is i have bolted on a set of metal sliders that i had 
previously on this truck that I took off that I didn't think I was gonna use, but now actually are going to work out just fine since I'm pinching the rear of this body. Everything lines up about where I want it, so we're sticking those back on. It's gonna save me the effort of having to fabricate that. The only thing that we need to do still is put the stinger on the front bumper and then the whole rear cage. But like normal, I think what I'll do is start my cage work in CAD so I can really get a feel for the looks and make sure that it's gonna be done the way that I hope that it will you know, turn out in the end. If I can see it on the computer, then I can be uh, happier with it and it will actually allow me to fabricate much faster than if I'm just trying to wing it. So I, that's where I usually find the most success. So the CAD work is going to delay us slightly. We'll see if I decide to start tackling the CAD work in Fusion 360 rather than in SolidWorks, like how I normally do. I'm sure we'll touch on that on the next update and what I finally decided. Now, in front of you here is my Class 3. Now this truck is using a VS410 chassis, VFD transmission, and capper axles. In the front though, you may see this shiny piece up there, and that is one of the first production capper axles from Vanquish. Now this is an offset front pumpkin axle, a major change from the stock style centered pumpkin that came in the stock axial capra. Capra axles are wider than an SCX 10 2 style axle, but narrower than something like an AR60. And of course they have a portal design. This truck will all be designed around the fact that, you know, portal can raise your center of gravity. So we're gonna try and keep everything nice and low, but there are several other challenges that I will of course have with this. Currently, I'm planning on using a chassis mounted servo in front, servo on axle in the rear. With the chassis mounted servo though, we are going to go with a three link with pan hard setup and clearances are pretty tight as far as that goes. There are some provisions to be able to mount a pan hard mount on this axle though, luckily, but for right now, I'm gonna have to fabricate my own mount to be able to do that. I think it'll be pretty easy though. I'm not very concerned about uh, the difficulty of that. Now you may also see that currently I've got four wheel steer on this setup. How that is working right now is I've got the stock front axle from my Capra in the rear. This will get replaced with another Vanquish Products uh, axle housing in the rear, but for now I had one. Brandon has one and uh, you know, so I just moved one to the other and picked up another set of knuckles to mock everything up. I have cut the chassis off significantly, both front and rear to get everything shortened up. The tube work that will go on here will lengthen things out a bit more for style. I wanna keep it looking how I you know, ideally want, not necessarily just going for all out performance. In the end, all of these trucks, I want to be trucks that I would be happy with driving and owning, not just something I'm you know, purely focused on competing with since I'll probably compete with them all exactly one time. This truck has a massive amount of work ahead of it. It needs fabricated front bumpers, needs a fabricated rear section, fabricated sliders, probably try and tie a lot of those things in together to get this thing finished out. Now I am planning at this point at least using the capper shocks all the way around. Why not? A little bit longer, a little bit larger bore. I think it'll be something that's worth trying out. I can always change it to a standard 90 millimeter shock in the future if I want something a little bit shorter. But, but for now, I've 3D printed some shock mounts with a number of hole locations so I can kind of play around with angle and height to try and figure out where I need to build my fabricated shock mounts too. The 3D printed parts will be gone as soon as I start metal fabrication. I also currently have a set of 2.2 Vanquish Machete bead locks on here with the new black hardware set. And the tires are the 2.2 Pitbull Bravens. Now these are that 5.2, 5.3 inch tall tire. So slightly taller than the 4.75 inch tall tire that I've got here on my class two, but not by a ton. Last year, there was a lot of success with people in class three running a tall 1.9 tire, basically a class two with rear steer. I wanted the ability to run a little bit taller tire, so I picked these up. I also picked up a set of 2.2 Hyrax, which are 5.75, and I picked up a set of 1.9 Hyrax, 4.75. So this truck, I should have the ability to run any size tire that I want. Currently, I've got the wheelbase set at about 13 and a half inches. That's a wheelbase range that I'm pretty familiar with. I like driving it, uh, even or especially at a 1.9 tire size. My Carnivore is 13 and a half inch wheelbase and runs a 4.75 inch tall tire. 
The Vanquish front axle housing for the capper has additional caster built in, which is definitely going to be nice. It's gonna allow me some great steering angle. It's gonna help also keep my tires out of the way of links and shocks a little bit better. In the rear, I've got the stock housing for now, and the caster is about straight up and down. Once I add the additional caster from the additional Vanquish housing back here, it's going to kick that out, give me a hair more wheelbase, but also it'll give me a little bit better control when I'm using four wheel steer especially if I'm up on a ledge. You've got straight up and down caster and you're standing up and you try and rear steer, your car's gonna wanna fall a lot more than if you've got a little bit of added caster there. Now, even with added caster, it's still gonna wanna shorten the wheelbase slightly when you start to turn while up on a ledge, but it reduces that effect at least. The 2.2 machetes that I've got mounted on here are also custom anodized gold, just like the 1.9 101s that I've got on my 4Runner. That's not an offered color. It's just something that I had done custom. Lots more to come on this. We'll get into the details later. But what I wanna do at this point is transition from filming here at the bench and start heading out and doing a little bit of fabrication. Again, it's gonna be a little bit just trying to find our way through and make sure that my workflow is possible. So fingers crossed that things go smoothly, but we'll switch to vlog style and get out there. So here's what we've currently brought home. This is my table, it's that four foot by four foot. It's a I don't know, 3 16 inch steel top. Uh, nice size in general, something reasonable to fit into most spaces uh, that I've been working in. So got a bench top vise, my little drill press there. This is that Northwest uh, Scale Designs chassis table. It's just been a nice piece to have. I leave a chassis mocked up in it and then I've built stuff off from there. So this has been a, a real handy piece then, especially how I've been using it. I've got uh, a lot of my material here, you know, just various sizes of steel that I just cling wrapped to, uh, to get it moved over here. I need to build myself a material holder for all this stuff. Then we've just got some basic thin plate steel, various thicknesses for brackets or detail stuff. And then this is a box of tabs and stuff that a friend of mine, Bob Tarvin, brought over and let me pick through so I can hopefully make some of this stuff go a little bit faster. Just a bunch of different thicknesses, sizes, shapes, all kinds of stuff. So hopefully that will be super helpful. Like I said, the Forerunner is going to be what we're going to tackle first. I've got my Razor Weld here. This is my Razor Weld 160P running on 110. And today I think we're going to be mainly working with 3 16th inch solid rod for this front bumper. So my template here is basically just sticking it under the body and tracing that front edge of the grill. I was thinking about adding something further, but I don't think that's gonna be my plan any longer. Instead, I'm gonna to go to the inner line there that actually traced much closer. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna bend my steel and try and match that pattern as best I can. I want it to curve all the way around to the edge of the body. To do that, again, I'll be using 3 16 solid steel. And for bending, I've got this, which is the BAC Industries Mighty Rod Bender. This is like 30 bucks on Amazon. Just, I've had it for six or seven years now, and it's just been great. It's got extra dies you can put onto that center to you know increase the radius of your bend. But this, the, you know, you can bend right on the main post to give you the tightest bend radius, which is probably going to be pretty close to what I need for that grill. This works great for solid rod. So starting to mock up what we have here, I need to keep this bar to the outside of the red line. I'm creating a little bit of a gap here on the front, and I think that's going to be all right. Otherwise, it was going to be like a real tight 90 degree bend, and I just didn't think that was going to look good. So we're going to kind of split the difference between what I initially thought, what I thought next, and where we're at now. But what I'm going to do is mark my halfway point so that I can replicate this bend point on this side, and then finally the last bend. All right, so for my weld settings, we've got a half a second of pre-flow gas, a startup amperage of 10. So as soon as we hit the button, it starts at 10 amps. It has a one second ramp up from 10 to the peak amperage of our 55. Being that we're using 3 16 solid rod, I'm gonna hit it at about 55 amps. I am using a pulse function. So 
what we've got here is we've got a base amperage of 15 amps. We've got a half of a second ramp down. So once you let go of the button, it ramps down over a half second to our finish amperage of 10. And then I've got 1.5 seconds of post flow gas. So that keeps the argon flowing for one and a half seconds just to keep from oxidizing the weld after it's finished. So we're using a 40% peak amperage frequency. So that means it's at the peak amperage for 40% of the time, then at the base amperage for 60%. And I'm using 1.5 pulses per second. And again, I'm using silica bronze for my filler rod. Silica bronze is nice because it flows a lot better. You don't have to get the base materials as hot it just melts at a lower temperature. I found this to be just kind of my ideal filler rod for uh, RC builds at this point. So we've tacked up the bumper. Now I'm gonna take it back off of here, test fit it on there, make sure everything looks good, and then put it back on here and kind of finish up my design. Okay, so I ended up changing out the tabs. I went with something that gave me a little bit more height. Uh, so I took off the old version, which was this and shorter, went with a taller one. And now I've got the top bar tacked back on. It stays really tight to the top of the grill. So much better shape there. Little bit out from the front of the uh, grill, but not too bad. I'm okay with that. At this point, I'm going to take and use some 1 8 inch rod, and we're going to go from this bottom hole area right here, and I'm going to connect it from this point, bend down, kind of through that area, and then back up. I'm actually going to kind of open up that hole. I'm not going to try and go through it, but we're just going to rest in that pocket. And then from that point, I'm going to straight line cut these brackets so that they taper straight back from the top bar to that hole, kind of get rid of this front shape. All right, so I have this lower 1 8 inch piece in there and it's just, I just have it held in with a magnet currently. And what I need to do is take and turn down the amperage on the TIG so that I don't burn through that 8 inch rod so fast. I need to be able to add heat to both of them without just melting and destroying that 8 inch rod. So I'm gonna change it from around 55 I'll probably go down to about 35. So now at this point I can trim that, uh, that bracket down so that it's more of a straight line between the two bars. That way I don't have that, uh, that odd shape to that bracket. I'll probably add some uh, steel plate to the front of this, some thin sheet metal, and we'll TIG that across and probably call that about good. Uh, other than I probably need to add some sort of fair lead accommodation, so. This is 24 gauge sheet metal, super thin. We're just gonna turn the amperage way down on the TIG and fill along all of the edges. So today I was only able to get the front bumper done on this truck. Fabrication time got cut a little bit short, but either way, got the front knocked out. You know, it's always a little tricky to do bumpers and especially a full width bumper like this one to try and keep it as tight to the grill as possible. I didn't end up cutting the chassis back. We just left it where it was and I kept it is, uh, you know, just tight to the body. I still have good approach angle this way. Sticks just barely out in front of the grill. Overall, I'm happy with it and I think we're gonna be able to, to move forward with what we have here. So I have to do just a little bit of cleanup and add something for like a fair lead or winch line guide. But now that I have my fabrication stuff here, I'm finding that I have most of the things I need. I still do need to go pick up some extra clamps and little vice grips, just little things that uh, I need extras of. So gonna pick those things up. That'll help fabrication go much faster. And I'm going to get started on the design of the cages for both the class two and the class three. Once I have my plans 
uh, laid out a little bit better, this stuff is gonna start moving quickly. The class three is going to be kind of where the hardest decisions are to make as far as style goes because it's really wide open and I have to kind of decide the style that I want. I think I'm gonna try and keep it looking semi truck bed or power wagon bed like. So I'm gonna try and maintain that and keep it looking as a, you know appropriate as possible in that regard rather than going just like full truggy. So that's the few decisions that I have made. And that gives me a direction to go with my CAD work so that I'm not just drawing lines aimlessly trying to find something that I think looks good. The class one is still gonna be where a lot of the work just has to be done by hand because I need everything to fit well and closely into this body. So that's gonna take some significant work and I think that's going to be a situation where I just sit here with cardboard templates, making sure things fit, getting it in there, test fitting, welding back and forth. But one more week down, 30 some odd days to go. We're gonna really, this week is going to be fabrication week. Now today when I was filming, I did do some, you know, filming of the actual bumper, but I didn't really get crazy in depth. I never know how that will actually play through as far as, you know, fabrication videos go. If I was to like really get down and do step by step or my full process and if that's more along the lines of what you'd like to see let me know or less if you just kind of like the here's where we started here's where we finished you know that's fine too let me know what you guys would rather see as far as the fabrication side goes when we're doing the other fabrication things I'll, i will try and get better lighting and i'll bring my other camera out there so we can get a little bit better shots we can zoom in rather than just trying to film with a gopro if there's anything else specifically you guys would like to see on the fabrication side absolutely drop it below because at this point i'm just kind of throwing out there whatever i see or think is worth filming at the moment oh also i did order my power shift rc winches i ordered three winches one for each of these all of them the same i ordered the pst 200 it's that same stubby uh, power shift winch that i used in the crawl masters build last year and i'm just going to drop the same one in all three trucks it works so well in the vs 410 uh, front servo mount. So I just decided to take the easy road out and get the same one across the board. The only downside is, is that I procrastinated so long on getting them ordered and Jonathan from PowerShift is down at the USTE event. So getting the winches is slightly delayed for me. So we just have to sit back and wait. Hopefully they show up at before Crawl Masters at least so I can get one dropped in here and uh, be ready to go. Up to this point, we've been doing about a video a week on this uh, series or however we're going. We'll see as things really get cranking here if I increase that or we maintain the same. But either way, no matter what, I'll get you guys at least one video per week throughout this series. Hopefully you guys had a good weekend too. Best of luck on your Mondays and thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.